So I hopped back on my main account the weekend of January 20th to try some Theme Chronicle events and just wanted to see what decks I had available to me. And funny enough, I had Marincess, which the core of the deck in the main deck isn't really nerfed or limited. So you can kind of play a full Marincess package, which is technically a budget option since you only have super rares, no ultra rares in the main deck for Marincess. And then the ultra rare link monsters are actually banned in the Argonaut and the Bubble Reef. So you basically only need to craft super rares if you did want to play this. And then the core Marincess package is supplemented with just like a hand trap and or going second package. So you have like Nibiru's Maxi, Ash Blossom, Duster, Evenly and Imperm in my case. Uh, you can play whatever you want though. And then you have some extenders which make the deck a little bit more consistent in Cyanet Mining and Marincess Dive. And then you can even opt to throw in some talents if you want as well. But Marincess is a fairly straightforward and standard deck, easy to play and a good budget option in my opinion because it's a Cybers one card combo deck. You link climb, you set up the Crystal Heart with the Battle Ocean and then link that into Marbled Rock to make it unaffected. And then you just have a couple of interruptions hopefully for your opponent's turn and you're able to just power through whatever board they're able to put up in this nerfed format. And just to show you that this deck is effective as a new player coming back after five months, making tons of misplays in all my matches still, we were able to go 4-0 in our first four matches. And what I have showcased for you today in this match, which is about to start, is uh, I guess going up against another budget option deck, but the opponent was pretty smart when, in this match. Um, and you're gonna see how many misplays I make and it's gonna be hilarious if you end up watching it. So yeah, let me know how you're doing in Theme Chronicle if you're still around for this content. And uh, let's go ahead and get into that match. All right, this game is kind of hilarious if nothing else, for the fact that I just don't even remember how the client works and I make several different misplays, but we're gonna point those out the best we can. So to start off, since we're going first, we're gonna pitch uh, evenly matched with the sign at mining since that is a going second card. And we do have Nibiru in case the opponent does end up outing our board and is able to combo off, but we're able to grab blue tang and dump a seahorse. Now off of the slug, we're gonna be able to grab back that seahorse and then off of the blue tang reveal from being used as link material, we're gonna be able to grab a dive. So this is going really well for us. No interruptions on the opponent's side. Don't have to worry about Imperm or Ash or Maxi. And that's all great. They could maybe slap a Nibiru, but I guess we'll find out. First misplay is there's no reason to put this on field right now because again, this just plays harder into Nibiru. Put this on the field during the end. Um, if the opponent had Nibiru, unless they toggled off, they would uh, definitely be like, ask, or the game would be asking them to respond. That's how you know. I do remember that at least from when I used to play. Um, but anyways, we're just doing standard Marincess link climb things. And we're gonna be able to extend out here. I go for the Pascalis, which is odd, but I wanted the option to banish it to grab back a dive if I wanted to, because I actually wanted to get two Marincess monsters into my hand for this specific reason that I talked about kind of in the beginning in that since Marbled Rock is my like end board, I do have to be wary of using the second effect here, which is if my opponent is able to somehow play around and, and out my board and try to beat over my monsters or something, um, I do have to use the second ability of, I can send a Marincess monster from my hand to the graveyard. And then for that battle, my monsters can't be destroyed by battle and I take no damage. So if they were like gonna OTK me or something, um, like with a direct attack somehow, which is, which will come up, um, not an OTK, but a direct attack, I can technically dodge it. So. Because of that, I wanted to have a card that I could play, and I also wanted to make sure I had a card to pitch for the Marbled Rock, and then still had a card to play on top of that. So getting the Pascalis here was kind of foresight to say, if I do need to banish it next turn to grab back the dive in the graveyard, I have that ability, and I have the two Marincess monsters in hand, one to pitch off Marbled Rock, and one to extend with during the next turn if I need it. So I'm not feeling too bad. Uh, again, didn't get Nibiru. The Sleepy Maiden is protecting the Battle Ocean from destruction. The Marbled Rock is untargetable because it, it used uh, Crystal Heart as material with Battle Ocean on field. I've got a Duster for any back row the opponent might end up setting if they can't out my board. I've got a Nibiru in case they do out my board and try to combo off. And I've got my own extenders as well to re-combo during my turn, assuming the opponent doesn't draw into a Max C or something. And who knows, we might draw into an Ash or a Call By if, uh, if they do end up drawing a, a relevant hand trap. The opponent reveals that they're on the Sioux ship deck and this deck can be kind of scary. I guess this is a new card. I don't remember this at all being in the game before. Um, so in the past five months, I think this is a new new thing. Uh, and it's interesting because it definitely adds a lot of consistency to the deck. I guess they just grab a, a Gunkin card bait pretty much. And now my opponent goes into these cards and this is actually like a direct counter to my deck almost because they're able to negate just face up cards and it's permanent negates. And they're gonna be able to negate my battle ocean which completely shuts off like my whole engine. Um, and I didn't even think about this when I was building this deck and I was like, oh yeah, like if Battle Ocean gets like permanently negated or banished, I'm screwed. And so for that reason, I might want to edit the deck list and play two Battle Ocean. But you can see here, I did end up using the Marble Rock effect because when they attack directly, I wanted to pitch a card 
I think they definitely should have attempted to beat over the Marbled Rock instead of trying to attack directly. By leaving this on field, I do threaten taking this card out, and this card is protecting their Xyz Monster uh, Special Summon from the extra deck because it says, while there's a face-up card in a field zone, so mine or the opponent's, um, monsters they control summon from the extra deck cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects. And um, that is significant because my only way to out this big thing now that I can't have the attack boost from Battle Ocean is basically going into um, Stealth Kragen in order to pop it, which I can't do because this card's on the field, but I can beat over this. But again, the opponent has three back row. But again, we have the Duster. So you could kind of see how crazy this match is getting here. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate Marbled Rock uh, to grab back the dive. And, in, and I did that instead of using Pascal here. The reason I do this is because I wanted to try to bait out an Imperm because I'm gonna put my opponent on, you probably have one Imperm, but I doubt you have two. And so if they attempted to Imperm this, now that they can target it since, uh, I, I don't actually know if they can, no, yeah, they can target it because they do end up negating this later because Battle Ocean is on the field. Um, if they Imperm in this column to negate the Marbled Rock from getting the Marincess dive back, then I would be like, okay, I activate Duster in this column. If the if they do have an Imperm in this column, and I play this Duster in this column, they can just activate the Imperm, target the Marbled Rock, and then the uh, the Imperm will negate the column and the Duster, and it will also negate the Marbled Rock. So this is really bad if they have an Imperm in this column. So I'm gonna take the risk. They they don't have the Imperm, but they have the Imperm in this in the, in the other other free column, which is absolutely wild. So like I was one misplay away or like, you know, one luck of the draw away from just getting totally screwed here. Um, so they're going to go ahead and activate all their face down cards. They chain Forbidden Droplet at the end to send the two traps. And so they just got maximum value off of this. And this sucks because now my Marbled Rock can't beat over the Sioux Ship. At least I didn't end up attacking and then getting, you know, Forbidden Droplet after the fact. So getting it out of the way now is actually good. Um, and then I'm stupid because my timer was on like 30 seconds again because again, I'm like learning the game back. So I just end up going battle phase, which gives my opponent the ability to use this effect again. Not too significant, but yeah, they're just gonna end up negating more of my cards here. The The issue is if I had more time, I could have just re-comboed into um, another Marbled Rock with 2,500 attack and then swung into this thing. And then next turn, I could have gone into, oh no, then in main phase two to play around this effect to negate I could go into the Stealth Kraken perhaps and then pop this and clear the opponent's board. But, uh, but because I'm stupid I, you know, or slow, I can't do that. And now as a result, my opponent gets basically full extension, four cards in hand. They're gonna end up getting another free negate. So my whole board is completely negated. They have two of these Xyz gift cards, which basically draws them four cards. And then they're gonna banish the trap to put back the Suship cards and draw another card. Draw into a Monster Reborn and I'm like, yep, I definitely lose this, right? Um, I do have Nibiru, and during the opponent's first turn, they knew I probably had Nibiru because my field started lighting up on five summons. And you can see here, this is summon number three. The opponent goes into the Dreadnought here, and then they don't go into any more um, cards. So they knew I had Nibiru. They didn't go into the fifth summon to try to OTK because I'm sure they could have level four summoned um, somehow and then exist again to go for game. Uh, but they opt not to crash the Dreadnought into my Marbled Rock, and they opt again not to beat over the uh, Marbled Rock with the Dreadnought either. So, are they both Dreadnoughts? Oh wow, they're both Dreadnoughts. Okay, so this is the Sioux Ship, and okay, this is the Akura, and this is the Uni. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Uh, so they just pass turn now, and on our draw, we grab a second Nibiru, the opponent max sees us, and I'm like, okay, that's, that's not great. We're gonna Marbled Rock, and then I'm like, oh yeah, the effect is negated, so that doesn't help. Thankfully though, we're able to beat over the Sioux Ship that protects their special summon monsters from the extra deck from being destroyed by my card effects, which means I can now go into the Xyz monster um, Stealth Kragen. So I do have to give my opponent two free draws off of the Maxi, but I'm, a I'm able to pop the um, Uni Dreadnought, which is important because now I'm not like potentially getting lethal next turn. And I do have the Nibiru if the opponent does try to go any kind of OTK line against me here. Uh, so they're gonna go into another Uni um, and I just have to bait out the the negate now. So they get the negate off of that Uni Dreadnought and then they go into a fifth summon off of the class carrier. Now I make another huge misplay here not realizing that the, you know, the message popped up in the top right, which I know that it does, but I just missed it. And I thought the opponent went for look at my hand 
And so this is how like crazy it is when you're under the timer. Cause I, I again, on my opponent's turn, it, you know, it gave me 30 extra seconds. So I think I was on like 40 seconds. At this point, I'm on like 30 seconds again. And I could have pulled up the side and been like, what did you decide to do again? But again, under the timer, you're just like, I just got to make a decision. So the opponent opted to take my marbled rock or, or you know, take a monster, right? Either one. I should have just let them take it. And then the beard after the fact, not if I would have known that they were taking a card. And even if they were going to look at my hand, just let them look at my hand. I have two Nibiru. So if I only had one Nibiru, then nibiru in here, if they did decide to look at the hand, was the correct choice. But even if, you know, in this case, because I have two Nibiru, sure, what are you going to do? Look at my hand and take one of my Nibirus? I have another one. And then I, you obviously take the dive in this situation, so I don't have any extension. But because I'm an idiot, <clears throat> um, I Nibiru here. I'm surprised I didn't give my opponent the token in attack mode. But uh, yeah, the, thankfully the token only has 2550. But they don't have any other extension, thankfully. And so all they can do is beat over, or not even, just attack me directly with my own Nibiru. And then it gets passed back to me. And then I'm like, okay, please no maxi or other interruption. I know they have like, I think three uh, Sioux ships in hand. Thankfully they don't. And I'm like, even though my battle ocean is negated, I should still be able to OTK with just the regular Marincess monsters because um, the Nibiru can attack over the token. And then if I can put 6,500 damage on board, which is my normal monsters from the deck, I can actually win the game here. So I'm gonna extend into Coral and bring back the Crystal Heart so that I can link off into the Marbled Rock. This just gets me an extra link quicker. And this is 4,500 damage. We're gonna use Dive to bring out Blue Tank from the graveyard, Marble Rock to bring back the Spring Girl, which is another free extension. And this right here is enough damage. We have, oh, it doesn't show here, but, oh yeah, we had 102,000 on board, or sorry, 10,200 on board. And just like that, we're able to take the game. I went into the battle phase with nine seconds, by the way. And uh, yeah, I was able to win by like three seconds. So crazy game, but that's what happens when you're learning the client again and learning the game again. Let me know how you found this video, if it was interesting, and let me know how you're doing in the theme Chronicle event, if you guys are still around for the Master Duel content.